Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 48 Han Family Reunion After Qi Yunruo had reunited with Li Chen, it slipped his mind that the other two youngsters, who had just settled down in their shared little tent, were waiting for his return. Sui Yu kept watch at the entrance and kept asking, Why hasn't he come back yet? Sullenly, Zhou Yang said, I haven't seen him since last night. Me too. Did he get lost? There are many tents here. It's hard to tell the difference between them at night. Maybe he went to another person's tent and fell asleep. Sui Yu returned inside to lie down. This would be the best case scenario. I'm exhausted from today, so I'll sleep first. If he doesn't come back tomorrow, then we'll go look for him. Zhou Yang nodded. Okay. Qi Yunruo roused, mind still hazy. Then he remembered that he had found the prince last night. At present, he was by the prince's side. A smile graced his lips. He crawled out from Li Chen's arms and prepared to quietly step outside. Little Qi. Li Chen sat up. Your honored self should lie down. I will draw some water. I won't be too far. Little Qi, come over, said Li Chen, beckoning. Qi Yunruo approached and Li Chen pulled him into his arms. He could hear his chest vibrate. Sighing, Li Chen said, Don't leave me. In a little while, someone will come. A good while later, Qi Yunruo nodded. All right. The person who delivered the water was a little girl Qi Yunruo recognized. Surprise painted her face when she laid eyes on Qi Yunruo. Somewhat embarrassed, Qi Yunruo said, I'll help you. Li Chen and Qi Yunruo washed their faces with a basin of water. The little girl flushed in an instant. As if she realized something, she said in a neutral tone like before, Brother Shui, just now Sui Yu and Zhou Yang were searching for you. At the moment, they should be residing in a single tent. Feeling apologetic, he turned around and said to Li Chen, I'll go talk to them. For a few seconds, Li Chen hesitated but Qi Yunruo pointed to a direction. It's at the tent over there. I'll return very quickly. The people living around here all belong to the princess. I'll be fine. Finally, Li Chen nodded but a sigh escaped from his lips. Embracing Qi Yunruo, he said, return quickly. All right. Qi Yunruo and the little girl left together. She asked, Brother Shui knows that prince. He nodded. The little girl was from Zenyuan country and originally thought Qi Yunruo was as well. She blinked, still not connecting the dots. As Qi Yunruo entered the communal tent shared by him, Sui Yu and Zhou Yang, anger peppered Sui Yu's voice as he said, Where were you last night? We waited for you for a long time. Did you get lost? asked Zhou Yang. Very soon, they would be separated. Qi Yunruo couldn't refrain from feeling sentimental. However, he had no idea how to explain his circumstances. After wavering for a good while, he pulled the two into a sitting position. I've kept something from you from the start that... I am not from Zenyuan country. Shock collided into the two youngsters. I'm from the great state of Kong. Because of certain reasons, I was detained in Zenyuan country and unable to return. Then I followed Boss Moshi here because I'm looking for someone. After a long time, Zhou Yang said, You're not staying with us. Qi Yunruo shook his head. Sui Yu remained silent. Although they had only been together a few days, they had relied on each other during times of adversity and as such developed a lot of feelings. Bitterness existed in the gazes of Sui Yu and Zhou Yang, as well as sadness. All of a sudden, Qi Yunruo's eyes brightened. If the prince brought the princess away from here, could her slaves follow along? Qi Yunruo said, wait for my news. After I determine a few things, I'll return. Before the two youngsters could respond, he had rushed off. Qi Yunruo made for Li Chen's tent, catching sight of a familiar figure at the doorway. Somewhat surprised, he shouted, Guard Fang! 
Fang Gur had once lent 250 grams of silver to Chi Yunruo to purchase Granny Kong and her daughter-in-law in the human market. Among Li Chen's guards, he was the one Chi Yunruo was most familiar with. The battlefield was unpredictable. As such, Chi Yunruo was thrilled to see him unharmed. As soon as Fang Gur finally saw him, shock colored his face. After a while, he said, Why is your honored self here? young master Chi. A smile graced Chi Yunruo's lips. Once I arrived at Zenyuan country, I followed one of their merchants to this place to meet with His Highness. During that period, Fang Gur had followed the prince's side. Therefore, he was very clear on the prince's worries. Not to mention, he had a good impression of Chi Yunruo. He sighed deeply. This is truly great. Hearing voices from outside his tent, Li Chen called out, Little Chi. The reason Fang Gur was around was to deliver a letter to Li Chen. Li Chen was in the middle of reading a letter from Ji Huan that had arrived from Zenyuan country, when he caught sight of Chi Yunruo entering the tent. A smile appeared on his lips. Little Chi, you've done a great service. As Chi Yunruo widened his eyes, Li Chen told him to sit next to him, so that they could read Ji Huan's letter together. And Ji Huan wrote that the king of Zenyuan country, Cheng Sija, was a wily old fox. Regarding the matter of the army provisions, he maintained that the Jiang had coerced them into it. And Cheng Sija kept saying that they had been framed for Sida's ambush. That Zenyuan country had never sent anyone to attack anyone from Great Kong. He was so shameless, it really caused others to acclaim his shamelessness as the peak of perfection. Ji Huan also said that from the start, he could not find any news about Chi Yunruo. Although he had confronted Cheng Sija about it, the latter would not admit to anything. Furthermore, he and Yuan Rong could not move freely in Zenyuan country, unable to search for Chi Yunruo with great fanfare. These days, the situation in Zenyuan country was tense. Feng Jiang was missing. The Qiang envoys who suspected they had been eavesdropped on gave Cheng Sija trouble every day. And Cheng Sija couldn't find peace at all. Consequently, he paused the negotiations with the envoys of Great Kong. Ji Huan detailed the rumble he and Yuang Rong heard on that day, underneath the main hall of Zenyuan country's palace. In the secret tunnel. They had already put forward the request that Zenyuan country remove all their spies in the Great Kong. However, the condition Zenyuan country put forward was to release everyone Zhao Weidu had captured in Yushu Pass. As for whether Cheng Sija was the descendant of the previous dynasty's emperor, both countries now knew. But if one side kept quiet about it, so would the other. When it came down to it, it would be disadvantageous for both countries should this information spread. Regarding Zenyuan country, they currently did not have strength to contend with the great state of Kong. Cheng Sija was an expert at fanning the flames at the back. Regarding Great Kong, who knew how many of the previous dynasty's people remained in their territory? Who knew whether, after the Cheng family had created Zenyuan country, they followed them to the new nation or stayed in Great Kong to cause trouble? Once Chi Yunruo had finished reading Ji Huan's letter, he knew what was above the secret tunnel he had run through that day. Nevertheless, an ember of fear remained in Li Chen's chest for a while. If at that time, Little Chi did not follow Feng Jiang out of the palace, Cheng Sija who had been humiliated into a rage, might have killed him then and there. He couldn't help but rejoice. Fortunately, once Little Chi had left the palace, he found a way out of Zenyuan country. At the start, I thought that if those Jiang people could not find me, they would make a huge fuss in the palace and attract the attention of many people. I never would have imagined for Brother Ji and the rest to also hear it. It's truly fortunate. He noticed Li Chen's strange expression and understood why. He approached him to kiss his cheek. Li Chen felt that after a period of separation, Little Chi had changed a lot. Just before, he had heard Little Chi and Fang Gur speak, and he seemed to have gained many new friends. He even acted differently around Li Chen than he did before. The little Chi of the past was quiet and indifferent, always staying alone in the tent. Originally, Li Chen had been very fond of this. 
It wasn't until the present that he realized he loved this vivacious and bold young man, whose eyes shone with determination, more. That's right, boys this age should be like this. Actually, after Little Chi rushed to Yan Luo Valley alone on horseback, used a dagger to kill the western owl Yaksha sneaking an attack on Li Chen, and lured away the pursuing Jiang soldiers while riding Hung Suan, before leaping into the Yun River. Li Chen understood that constraining him in that small inner courtyard was a cruel thing to do. After so many years of confinement under Count Xiang, Little Chi had finally been set free by him. Later on, Li Chen brought Qi Yunruo with him to meet Princess Changping. Qi Yunruo had already met her prior. Last time, he had been calm but this time, worry filled his heart. On the way there, they had been under the watchful eyes of Buahgur's many subordinates. The Qiang man who had followed the command to seize Qi Yunruo yesterday saw Li Chen holding Qi Yunruo's hand. First, he seemed frivolous, before smiling proudly but in the end, he frowned. Li Yao had instructed Wang Er in advance to receive them as they entered the residence. A smile slid across Li Chen's face and he gently pushed Qi Yunruo forward, whom he had pulled behind him earlier. Caught off guard, Qi Yunruo at long last walked before Li Yao's eyes. Wang Er, although distracted, reacted first. Why are you here? Qi Yunruo lowered his head. Princess, it is my fault that I did not report my identity yesterday. I knew His Highness would come see your honored self, so I came with the slaves here. Li Yao was very intelligent. Pleasant surprise flashed through her eyes. A smile lit up her face as she pulled Qi Yunruo closer to her side to sit down. Her gaze fell upon Li Chen. This is truly great. Now you can finally let go of your worries. Wang Er smiled as she said, so that's how it was. You didn't seem careful with your duties yesterday and was very absent-minded. I wonder why I didn't see you last night. Displeased, Li Yao said, Wang Er. Wang Er giggled and covered her mouth, as she stopped saying anything else. Qi Yunruo's face grew redder. Sitting across from him, Li Chen said, but it's still unsuitable to make this public. Let's just say I grew a fancy to one of elder sister's slaves and brought them back. Nodding, Li Yao looked at Qi Yunruo again. Li Chen said, Little Qi has suffered immensely and has lost a lot of weight recently. Li Yao turned to face Wang Er. Did you hear? Have the kitchen prepare a lot of meat dishes for the noon meal and fresh sheep milk. Then she said to Qi Yunruo, Sheep milk is very nourishing for the body. Qi Yunruo nodded. Many thanks, your highness. Shaking her head, Li Yao said, just call me big sister like brother Chun does. Family members shouldn't be saying your highness, your highness. Moved, Qi Yunruo felt his heart warm. Princess Changping was kind and gentle. So much so that he dared to think that it would be great if she were his real sister. The prince must have been very happy in his youth to have such an eldest sister accompanying him. Li Yao asked Li Chen, I didn't mention the peace talks yesterday, but how are things going with Buahgur? Li Chen suppressed a smile. Buahgur agreed to be the leader of the vassal state to Great Kong and also agreed to give the Western Owl and Seeking Eye tribes and their land to Suzhou. Li Yao nodded, though her expression contained worry. The Western Owl and Seeking Eye tribes are of no use to Buahgur or our great state of Kong. From now on, those tribes must change their leaders. We must suppress the militant clans and lift the many clans that follow the golden mean of Confucianism. Then we must send officials from Great Kong to supervise them, said Li Chen, expression solemn. In turbulent times, severe punishments are to be used. If they disobey, kill them. Kill every person who disobeys, every family that disobeys, every clan that disobeys. Slowly, Li Yao nodded. Wang Er had shut the door long ago and was keeping guard outside. Indifference peppering her words, Li Yao said, Buahgur is certainly fond of the culture of the Han. In the future, when he becomes a subject of Imperial Father, let's have Imperial Father bestow him the Four Arts Cotton, and Silk. Li Yao swept her gaze through the surrounding decorations. 
Furthermore, Buahgur intends to copy the Han in constructing a palace. I approve of this. Let's have Imperial Father dispatch an artisan here. Following that, the Qiang nobles will fall over each other in eagerness to imitate it. In less than ten years, in the royal capital of the Qiang, the customs of the Han will stretch as far as the eye can see. However, there was a trace of distress on Li Chen's countenance. Eldest sister, you really won't return with me. Qi Yunruo's heart trembled. Nevertheless, Li Yao shook her head. She reached out to hold Li Chen's hand. A smile blossomed on her lips. Elder sister will stay here to watch over the Qiang for you. I'll return one day, won't I? Never have I doubted brother Chen. One day, personally issue a decree to summon me back to the capital and visit grandmother and the other close relatives. At that time, I will return in an honorable manner, sitting in a carriage with four horses with a retinue of a hundred or so members, with the appreciation and honor of the Qiang, with your meritorious achievements. Tell elder sister that such a day will come. Qi Yunruo's heart shook, as if a powerful earthquake had affected it. He glanced sideways at Li Chen. A light flashed in Li Chen's eyes. He trembled. I promise you, eldest sister, that such a day will arrive. Moreover, it will be very soon. I will personally escort you home. Smiling, Li Yao nodded. All of a sudden, Qi Yunruo heard Wang Er say with much impatience, What are you doing? Princess is in the middle of conversation with His Highness. What business do you have being here? In an instant, Li Chen's expression chilled. Following that, a woman said loathingly, I'm a citizen of the great state of Kong. Am I not allowed to pay respects to His Highness? What are you even? Li Yao lightly said, Wang Er, let her in. Winning the battle, Qin Er flung her sleeves and entered the room with her head held high. At first, Qi Yunruo wanted to stand but Li Yao brought a hand to his arm to keep him sitting. Once Qin Er had entered the room and saw that Qi Yunruo was also seated, she curtsied to Li Yao in an unwilling manner. Then she also saluted to Li Chen. This concubine greets your highness. Furrowing his brows, Li Chen glanced at Li Yao. She gestured to him to not be angry, and said to Qin Er, Why have you come? Qin Er flashed Li Chen a smile. This concubine heard that your highness and princess were present and came to pay respects. Li Yao grunted in acknowledgement. Qin Er's expression stiffened. Why did she come? She wasn't a fool. She had been with Buahgur for many years and naturally knew that eldest prince Buahgur's status was different from that of the past. In the future, he would be the new leader of the Qiang. As a woman of Buahgur, Qin Er would also have glory. In her opinion, since she gave birth to three children for Buahgur, her glory and favor should never weaken. However, because of her past status as a slave, Buahgur's other concubines had ostracized her. But now, she was the only Han woman here that had status and position. If His Highness removed her slave status after considering these facts, no matter what, she was someone who had accompanied the princess in her political marriage, and should have done a meritorious deed for Great Kong. She wanted a new identity from the great state of Kong, wanted honor and glory. Caught up in her desire and thoughts, Qin Er couldn't form complete or coherent sentences. Li Chen frowned once more. Finally, Qin Er said, This concubine has been away from home for many years, and yearns for one's homeland. Then this prince will tell Buahgur to allow you to return to Great Kong. Fear struck Qin Er's heart. She forced a smile. That wasn't this concubine's intention. Although this concubine misses one's homeland, this concubine has already married far away in the Qiang lands. How could this concubine return? This concubine is willing to stay here for the sake of the relationship between Great Kong and the Qiang. Li Chen fell silent. Qi Yunruo lowered his head, eyes darting left and right from thought. He deduced what that woman wanted. After all, her expression was too obvious, such a look of wanting something but being too embarrassed to speak up was not hidden at all. At this point, 
Li Chen had already picked up a teacup. Li Yao also did not have the intention to continue the conversation. Qi Yunruo teased, His Highness knows. However, His Highness and Princess are having a discussion as family members, and still have many things to say to one another. Does this mistress still have any other business? Chiner stared at him in ire but Qi Yunruo merely said, This mistress is a loyal servant. Hopefully you will continue to attend to Princess in such a way in the future. Princess has a noble identity. If you are good in your service, it would be an even greater contribution to the relationship between Great Kong and the Qiang. Yesterday, when Qi Yunruo had first seen Chiner, he had been displeased. He was unwilling to see her act so disrespectfully toward the princess. Thus, he harassed her as a result, pretending to not pay attention as he glanced at Li Chen's reaction. At the same time, Li Chen looked at him with a smile. At the beginning, Chiner was furious and wanted to vent out her anger but after seeing Li Chen's expression, she was suddenly unable to speak. She ground her teeth. This concubine will take her leave. Li Yao nodded. Chiner lowered her head and turned around to leave the room. She clutched her hands into fists, the fingernails digging deeply into her palms under the cover of her sleeves. Wang Er, who was standing at the door, looked at her in disdain. Chiner said in a low voice, There'll be a day when you have to beg me. Wang Er leisurely said, I also hoped that my sisters from the past would achieve great success and could help me. Inside the room, Li Chen asked, Was this one of the maidservants who accompanied eldest sister in her marriage? Paying it no mind, Li Yao said, Don't worry about these things. Even Qi Yunruo could pick up on Chiner's intention, let alone Li Chen and Li Yao. Li Yao said, She has children and her status is low. Only holding Buahgur's favor is useless. Li Chen said in a low voice, If she is disrespectful toward eldest sister in the future. Li Yao looked at him, amused. Do you think your sister can't put a maidservant in order? It's just that it's unnecessary. Among the Qiang, slaves are slaves. She won't be able to get anywhere. Qi Yunruo thought about the new friends he made, and hesitated for a moment. He would miss those two youngsters. The Qiang lands were very close to Zinyuan country but would they be willing to come to such a far away place like the capital of Great Kong? Not to mention, those two were people from Zinyuan country. Their statuses were special. In the future, if the relationship between Great Kong and Zinyuan country worsened, they would definitely meet trouble in Great Kang's capital. Qi Yunruo looked at Li Yao and said, Princess, I have something to trouble your honored self with. Li Yao's gentle gaze fell upon him. Face red, Qi Yunruo changed his manner of speaking. Big sister, it's this. On my road here I met two youngsters. Their lives are pitiful and they are young. I would like to request your honored self to take care of them, but it's not necessary to treat them especially good. It would be enough if no one bullies them. Their names are Sui Yu and Zhou Yang. Li Yao nodded. Smiled. Understood. They came with you yesterday, and are still children. A wave of relief washed over Qi Yunruo. Come noon, Li Yao kept placing food into Qi Yunruo's bowl, reminding him to eat more meat. Qi Yunruo drank a big bowl of sheep milk. And Li Chen said, if it works, I'll have the prince estate raise some dairy sheep. Little Qi will drink one bowl of milk a day. Qi Yunruo pursed his lips and said softly, I really didn't lose that much weight. A smile on her lips, Li Yao said, if you find the smell of sheep milk too pungent, give cow milk a try. You can also add some honey. Li Chen's gaze fell upon Qi Yunruo. Nodded. We'll try it once we return. Once they had finished their meals, Qi Yunruo and Li Chen returned to their tent. Then Li Chen resumed negotiating conditions with Buahgur. Qi Yunruo took a stroll to find Sui Yu and Zhou Yang and informed them of what he had requested of the princess. Sui Yu was no longer sad about their separation. He said straightforwardly, I understand. No matter what, 
we still haven't congratulated you for meeting with your important people. But Zhou Yang still seemed dispirited. Qi Yunruo touched his face. From now on, no one will bully you too. Actually, I want to return to Zenyuan country, said Zhou Yang. If I have a chance in the future, I would. My mother is buried there. I will do my duties well for princess. I'll make money, and once I am grown and strong, I will return to Zenyuan country. Sui Yu's parents were both deceased but after hearing Zhou Yang's words, he nodded. Yet. Yeah. I also want to return. Who gave those people the right to take possession of my parents' house and farmland? I want to take it all back. If they have the ability, then they can try to sell me again. Realizing that those two youngsters obtained new goals for themselves, Qi Yunruo felt relieved. For Sui Yu and Zhou Yang, Zinyuan country was their homeland, while he himself definitely needed to return to the capital. He needed to return to Prince Chun's estate, return to the prince's side. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 49 The Way Back Come night time, Qi Yunruo was startled awake. Li Chen patted him reassuringly on the back, his expression tranquil. Then, Qi Yunruo heard the shouts of many soldiers moving about outside the tent. The exterior was lit up brightly. In a flash, Li Chen's troops assembled, surrounding the tent. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet and put on his clothes. Urgently he asked, what happened? Don't worry. Li Chen put on the armor of a general, grabbed his weapon, and placed Qi Yunruo behind him for protection as they left the tent. Fang Gur, who was already outside, said, Your Highness, hundreds of Jiang soldiers have surrounded Buahgur's area. Speaking of which, Buahgur had already rushed here in a panic. Your Highness, this humble prince also doesn't know what happened. This humble prince is satisfied with your honored self's cooperation. If this subordinate has guessed correctly, Bo 2K sent people over. From the start, he has been very discontent with the negotiations between this humble prince and your honored self. Li Chen nodded. His gaze fell upon Li Yao's formal and splendid appearance. Behind her, Wang Er followed slowly. Catching sight of Li Yao, Buahgur called out Princess, then sighed. She looked at Li Chen. Under the orange glow of the flames, Li Yao's expression proved tranquil. The screams of the Qiang soldiers from afar grew louder and louder. Serenely she said, Bo 2K has already been driven to desperate action. Even if it were a Gu'er Mu, he wouldn't be as stupid as this. He truly was too stupid. Although it's true that Li Chen only had 500 men with him, and Buahgur didn't have many warriors here, Li Chen's 100,000 men were surrounding the Qiang lands. If something happened to him, without the need for the court's order, his troops would slaughter their way in. Buahgur gritted his teeth. I'll send people to negotiate with them. As Buahgur led people out of his area, Li Chen frowned. He suddenly thought, was there someone supporting Bo 2K in the background this time? To say that Bo 2K had been driven to desperate action was hitting the nail on the head. He watched as Buahgur and Prince Chun grew closer and closer to finishing their peace talks. Once that happened, the Han people would definitely help Buahgur ascend the throne. Back then, he had made trouble for Buahgur many times. If Buahgur wanted revenge against himself. However, if he could capture Prince Chun now and force the troops outside to retreat, he would bring his own men to slaughter their way out, slaughter all the way to Yusha Pass. Then he would have the most contributions. And Royal Father would rely on him the most. Bo 2K didn't have many men left under his command but he simply gritted his teeth and assembled them all here, yelling before Buahgur's tent. Naturally, he did not receive permission from Aguer Mu to do this. However, as long as he was successful, Royal Father definitely would not blame him. If it wasn't for King Cheng warning him, one would fear he would have lost his only chance. Teeth still clenched, Buahgur continued moving toward the outskirts of his area. And he indeed caught sight of Bo 2K. He scolded, 
have you gone mad? Who told you to come here? Bo 2K sneered. Who told me to come here? Buahgur. You useless thing. You're actually preparing to compensate Great Kong with much land, slaves, and livestock. It's none of your business how much we're compensating. Royal Father has already prohibited you from being involved with the peace talks. On top of his horse, Bo 2K held his head up high. You're only good at giving things away. Once I capture Prince Chun and force his troops to retreat, we will be the victors. We can demand land and money from Great Kong. Idiot! Fury burst from Buahgur's chest. If you do this, then in the future us Chiang can never be allies with the great state of Kong. If Bo 2K actually did this, and was even successful, Bo 2K would also not let himself go. Buahgur was well aware of that fact. Flashing in Bo 2K's eyes was concentrated contempt. Who wants to be allies with Great Kong? Among all of the Chiang, only you are different. Buahgur, we Chiang warriors have always triumphed in battle. And we have never surrendered to anyone. Buahgur practically smiled from anger. Expression strange, he stared at Bo 2K. Don't tell me you forgot that you led tens of thousands of Jiang soldiers and suffered a defeat so grand, you had to return? Up until Great Kong fought their way here. Bo 2K flew into a rage from humiliation. Shut up. Meanwhile, back near Li Chen's tent, Li Yao said, Bo 2K has always looked down on Buahgur. Even if Buahgur personally went out, he might not be able to persuade him to leave. Li Chen looked back. In an instant, the soldiers of Great Kong that were surrounding the Chiang lands took out their weapons. Those who had sabers, pulled out their sabers. Those who had spears, raised their spears. Li Chen said with indifference, if we fight our way out, then when we return here, it won't just be with 500 men. At that time, the Chiang lands would truly be absorbed into Great Kang's borders. Li Yao no longer spoke. However, Li Chen still held her hand as he said, Eldest sister, I'll have people send you away from here. Sabres and spears don't have eyes. I don't want to be worried about you. A smile graced her lips. She did not refuse. Right now, you are protecting your sister. Li Chen shifted his gaze to Qi Yunruo but Qi Yunruo firmly shook his head. Your Highness, I won't leave. I want to stay by your honored self's side. Li Chen gazed into Qi Yunruo's eyes but the latter only said, Your Highness, it took a great effort to find you. I won't leave. You want to protect me but I also want to protect you. Li Chen reached out to stroke Qi Yunruo's head, slowly nodding. Qi Yunruo then smiled, eyes shining, countenance bright. A smile also tugging at his lips. Li Chen glanced at him, before scanning his surroundings. Facing Fang Gur, he said, personally lead a group to send Princess back. Find a safe place. Fang Gur cupped one fist in a hand. Yes. After Fang Gur had escorted Li Yao and her maidservant Wang Er away, Bua Gur rushed over. Ashamed, he said, this humble prince is incompetent and could not stop Bo 2K. But this humble prince has already sent someone to deliver a message asking royal father to personally stop him. Expression indifferent, Li Chen said, what if Chanyuagu Ermu agrees with Bo 2K's actions? Buahgur froze. Li Chen gripped his saber and said with indifference, today, I fear that this prince would have to help eldest prince clean house. Li Chen did not want to time and time again enter dangerous situations. When he had arrived at the royal capital of the Chiang, he had already prepared sufficiently, to spread his army in all directions. At all times, there were a hundred or so soldiers sending news. The moment something abnormal happened at Li Chen's side, the army would crush its way through. Buahgur's subordinates had been blocking against Bo 2K's men for one hour. Now, Bo 2K waved his broadsword and charged toward Li Chen and the others. Li Chen smiled in contempt, raising his saber in greeting. Unfortunately for Bo 2K, 
his fighting skills could not even compare to those of new Bai Ha. The moment Li Chen killed his horse, causing him to fall to the ground, Li Chen's men had already surrounded the royal capital of the Qiang. Dispirited, Buahgur sighed. Bo Tu Ke had destroyed all his plans. Currently, it was already winter at the border, the nights even colder. The next day, as the Qiang civilians woke up from their dreams, they had already become the people of Great Kong. After the officials in the capital received their message, Li Chen and Qi Yunruo finally started on the road back to the Great Kang's capital. It grew cold in the northwest early. Qi Yunruo rode a horse yet still felt like he was about to freeze. Because the northwest was rich in furs, they made fur cloaks at Yushu Pass. The soldiers also wore cotton padded clothes. There, Qi Yunruo saw Xu Qing and Qi Yunying. Back then, after they had held Li Chen down from chasing after Qi Yunruo, Li Chen had punished them by taking away their military contributions and demoting them to regular soldiers. Now that Qi Yunruo could see them again, the hearts of both parties were deeply moved. Qi Yunruo still felt guilty toward Chu Qing. Yet, Chu Qing merely sighed. It's great that young Master Qi could return safe and sound. Otherwise, this subordinate would feel guilty my whole life. Originally, this subordinate was the leader of the guards at Prince Chun's estate. Those military contributions are not important to me. Qi Yunying said impassively, I also don't care about those things. It's enough that you're all right. I want to thank you all, said Qi Yunruo, resolute. If it weren't for you two that day, His Highness would probably be in danger. From the start, there's not much I can do. I also don't regret what I have done. The moment they had restrained the prince, Chu Qing knew the outcome. However, he could not just watch on helplessly as the prince dove head first into danger. He took it upon himself to protect the prince. Doing so was more important than gaining military achievement and killing the Qiang soldiers. Knowing that Chu Qing's official position in Prince Chun's estate would not be affected, Qi Yunruo finally felt relieved. He still did not know what to say to Qi Yunying. Qi Yunying was a reticent person. As the two walked together, Qi Yunruo asked, Do you have any plans once you return to the capital? Qi Yunying said, Since I won't be taking any more exams, I will become a guard at Prince Chun's estate. A smile spread across Qi Yunruo's lips. He recalled Qi Yunying's appearance when he had first arrived at the camp. He couldn't refrain from saying, Do you like the border more? Qi Yunying looked a bit helpless. Father would not allow it. This time, I just sneaked out. To have Count Ziang mentioned, Qi Yunruo's expression darkened a little. Qi Yunying noticed it, and his own expression tensed. After a while, Qi Yunruo said, Do you know why? Qi Yunying shook his head. Father never said why. He only said that our Qi family cannot be in the military for our whole lives. There was doubt in Qi Yunruo's heart. After he had returned to the prince's side, he couldn't help but want to ask for forgiveness for Chu Qing and Qi Yunying. No, said Li Chen, flipping a page. Unhappy, Qi Yunruo said, Does your honored self really think Chief Guard Chu should have let you rush out that day? He is your honored self's guard. His first priority is to protect you. Qi Yunying is the same. They obviously knew your honored self would punish them, yet still did this. So, it's evident how loyal they are. Li Chen impassively said, they knew at that time that if you were captured, death would be the most likely fate waiting for you. It's better that I die than your honored self meet danger. Don't say things like that. Li Chen's expression was as cold as ice. Startled, Qi Yunruo lowered his head, falling silent. A soft sigh left Li Chen's lips. He hugged the youth close to his chest and gave a squeeze. Little Qi, don't say these words. They make me sad. You don't know how worried I was when you weren't around. Qi Yunruo's heart softened. I'm sorry your highness. I shouldn't have said that. After we return to the capital, I will record Chu Qing and Qi Yunying's military contributions on the report. 
Right now, I'm just disciplining them. Chi Yunruo smiled. He got up from his arms. I know that your highness is someone who can separate between private and public matters. Smiling, Li Chen looked at him. His gaze held love. Chi Yunruo rested his chin on his hand. He recalled the words Shang Guanyao had spoken, feeling curious. He asked, Your Highness, have you ever seen General Chi Ran? Yes. Chi Ran died in his prime, not even fifty then. Everyone said that General Chi Ran was the most decisive and resolute person in several generations of the Chi family. His military service was outstanding and impressive. While he had been stationed at the border, the Qiang had never been able to approach one step. Speaking of which, the Qi family had always been small in number. Only this generation's Count Ziang was unlike the people of his father's generation, guarding the pass at a young age. Instead, he had left for the border after having two sons. Shang Guanyao said I resemble him a lot. Qi Yunruo worshipped heroes, so much so that he felt proud that Qi Ran was his grandfather. He was born just two years after Qi Ran had died. Back then, Qi Suxiao was still in mourning. Li Chen recalled and said, Actually, I don't remember it clearly. However, grandmother had once told me that because General Qi Ran was handsome, he feared he would not be able to scare his enemies. So, he always put on a fierce and malicious face. His expression would terrify people. When he came to the capital to participate in the annual banquet and held me, it made me cry. Chi Yunruo couldn't help but smile. He thought that the image of a two to three years old Li Chen crying would definitely be very interesting. Later on, General Chi Ran died from illness. It's because of the injuries he had received in his youth and also because he had to go on a campaign every year, consuming his mental and physical energy. At the end, he couldn't endure it anymore and died. After that, Count Ziang had to mourn for three years in the capital, said Qi Yunruo. Li Chen touched his head. Qi Yunruo seized the opportunity to lean on him. In a low and unheard voice, he said, Your Highness, I've heard that Count Ziang was denounced because of the matters regarding my mother. But to commit that crime during the mourning period, is that enough to take away the military power held by generations of the Qi family? Li Chen frowned. He did not respond. Qi Yunruo took his time saying, Your Highness, for some reason I've thought of this a lot lately. Your honored self has never seen my mother. She's very intelligent and skilled in the four arts. She taught me chess when I was six. Now, I can play against Cheng Sija. She also taught me how to play the Gukan. Just by holding and guiding my hands, she could make such a beautiful sound. She should have understood early on, yet she willingly exhausted her life in that place. Chi Yunruo's gaze held fear mixed with doubt. Your Highness, I really want to know. To know why she died. Sita had been captured, yet never exposed who his master was. He had been stationed at the Yushu Pass for many years, and accumulated much wealth. However, no matter what, they could not find who was his supporter from the shadows. He had no messages or letters from anyone. As his subordinate, Dong Cheng and his wife and children were all sent to the capital. When Li Chen and the rest passed by Hiluo County, county magistrate he had already been removed from office and sent back to the capital. Chi Yunruo remembered that this county magistrate he had once reported the prince for wrongdoing and wanted to splash dirty water on the prince. At that time, rumors regarding the prince flooded the capital and Yushu Pass. County magistrate he wanted to seize this opportunity to take advantage of a crisis for personal gain. But now, the prince accumulated this much military contribution and that county magistrate had been summoned to the capital for punishment. As county magistrate he was on the road back to the capital, the court had yet to send a new county magistrate. Right now, the deputies Yuan Xian and Yuan Wei managed Hiluo County together. Chi Yunruo once again ate fresh Hiluo mutton. It wasn't only Hiluo County. One after the other, 
Qing Luo County and Mi Luo County's officials sent them military rations, clothing, and many special local products and snacks. Li Chen did not refuse them, accepting them all. Come night, they rested in the rooms they had used in the past. Qi Yunruo recalled that back then, county magistrate he had sent over a beautiful young man. He couldn't help but laugh in secret. He had never felt this at ease before. The sky was high, the clouds immense. The entire nation at peace. He and the prince could return to the capital in a leisurely manner. They could take stops along the way, visit the places with delicious cuisines. It would be spring by the time they returned to the capital. In the warm spring was where the flowers bloomed, in the long grass where warblers flew, with the soft breeze drifting through the plains. It made others feel content just thinking about it. At the capital, perhaps there were countless hardships waiting for them. Like the people behind Sita and County Magistrate He, or the people of the previous dynasty hiding in the capital, who wanted to revolt and restore the previous dynasty. The emperor always had an ambiguous and hard-to-understand manner. As Qi Yunruo lay next to Li Chen, who was already asleep after drinking wine in the evening, he didn't seem to care about the men and women by the prince's side anymore. The prince had established glorious achievements, and perhaps in the future, there would be countless people throwing themselves at him. However, there would not be anyone like Qi Yunruo who understood him this much. There would not be anyone with another chance to follow him and return together from the battlefield, gaining the prince's heart through all those things he himself had done. Qi Yunruo raised his hand. This hand was fair, clear, and small. It did not have much strength. Yet, he wanted to protect the prince. To use these hands to create a serene place for him. He would grow stronger. He crawled into Li Chen's arms and fell asleep. End chapter